Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with Ripe for Reissue. And the object of my ire at this particular point is this, which I cannot believe is not available anymore. The Tchaikovsky Symphony Cycle, including Manfred, very good Manfred, with Bernard Heitink and the Concertgebouw Orchestra. Now, I, you know, Tchaikovsky, because he doesn't seem to be, you know, as, as, as popular as some other composers these days, seems to be going in and out of print with alarming rapidity, especially boxes containing the complete symphonies. You know, there was a time in the 60s and the 70s, even in sort of the beginning of the 80s, when Tchaikovsky cycles were coming pretty thick and furious. You know, there were, well, let's, I mean, all the major composers, I mean, conductors, or most of the major conductors did them. I mean, everyone did four, five, and six, but even complete cycles. You had Bernstein, you had a Bravanel, you had Timurkanov, you had, you had a Botto, you had Hytink here, you had Karyon, you know, there, there were more. And then, and, and, I mean, there were the Russian ones, there was like Svetlanov, and there was, there were, and there were more Russian ones than that on Melodia, but they, you know, they were always sort of hard to deal with. And there was Rostropovich, and there was Muti, and, you know, everyone was doing it. <clears throat> Go find them now. Some of them have been reissued at cheapy prices. I mean, Muti's back, for example. I mean, there was Markevich, Markevich, my reference version, sort of. But, but you know, uh, reference version, yes. But <laughs> I think my favorite, my personal favorite, or one of my personal favorites, let's put it that way. There has to be more than one when you're dealing with Tchaikovsky cycles. So yes, Markevich is in there, but, but this should never have gone out of print because this, this is one of my favorites and one of the great Tchaikovsky cycles for the sheer, well, it just has class. You know, Tchaikovsky can be played in, in, in a very vulgar way. I mean, he really can because of, because of the billowing gouts of passion, you know, tons and tons. Of, oh, there was also Pletnev, there was Lytton. I, mean, I could just keep coming up with Tchaikovsky cycles. Anyway, you know, you can do really kind of crude things with Tchaikovsky. And it works very well, by the way. It kind of sounds good when you do it that way. That's one approach. Let's put it that way. You know, the white, hot, throbbing passion approach. And it's a good one and a valid one. But there is also the more musical, shall we say? I mean, the more structurally informed. Okay, the emotional temperature may be a little bit lower, but you can make up for it. You can make up for it in, in pacing in long-term structural cogency, and you can make up for it when you have an orchestra like the Concertgebouw that plays like gods. <laughs> I mean, it's just so beautiful. And I mean, the, you know, the passion in Tchaikovsky is built in. You should never downplay it. You have to let it do its thing. But once you let it do its thing, it's, it, it's just, you know, you can focus on some other aspects of the music because it's great music and it has other aspects. It's not just, you know, passionate hysteria. There, there's intimacy, there's, 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 there's happiness, there's, there's ebullience, there's sadness, there's darkness, there's, there's nostalgia. There's, you know, it's the whole enchilada. It's the complete package. And, and so, and so, a, a set like this was. This, this was made when Heitink was at the top of his form. The orchestra was at the top of its form, and Phillips was at the top of its form, recording in the Concertgebouw. And that was a big deal because right after these great symphony cycles got made with Heitink, they went digital, as did everybody, and that knocked them back ten years, as far as I'm concerned, because most of their digital recordings sounded just, just horrible absolutely horrible at the beginning of the digital era. And Heitink's remakes, not of Tchaikovsky, fortunately, sounded horrible. You know, there was the remake of, of the, like the Mahler 7 and, and, and there was, there was uh, another Bruckner 9 and, 
and, and Colin Davis did all kinds of stuff with the Gitzer Cabella. There was like pictures in an exhibition and an 1812 overture and all this other stuff. It just sounded dreadful, absolutely dreadful. I mean, they figured it out eventually, you know, several years later. But, but these were uh, caught the orchestra and the conductor at their peak. And this cycle is, is so, so gorgeous. I mean, I've already talked about like the Tchaikovsky Fifth, which is one of my all-time favorite recordings of that piece. But all of these performances are wonderful. Even the, even the, the Third Symphony, you know, the, the Polish Symphony, is, it's never been given a more beautiful performance. And because it's such a beautiful performance and such a smart performance and such an effectively paced and sensitive performance, it sounds like a great symphony. And it is a great symphony. And even Manfred, which, you know, usually usually fails, does very, very well with this approach because it's it's enormously powerful and and it doesn't dawdle, it doesn't drag. Heitink doesn't try to do things with it, you know, that that show that he's he has insecurities about the music, you know, like cut it or add tam tam crashes. He just plays it fabulously. And voila, it works when you do that. Isn't that a marvel? You also get like a whole bunch of shorter works in here. There's 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 Francesca de Rimini, a really good one, and the March Slav and the 1812 Overture without canons, granted, but you know, again, it's it's part of the approach. It's very effective. The Capriccio Italien, the Storm, Romeo and Juliet, and I I really 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 loved this set, but you can't get it. So what the hell is going on with Decca? Why would they, I mean, Decca, Decca, interestingly, Decca has a bunch of Tchaikovsky cycles, right? They have the Lauren Mazel, which I don't think is available. They have the Zubin Meta, which I don't think is available. I mean, maybe in big boxes or something, but they seem to be out of Tchaikovsky. And you know, I mean, let's let, let's just say, and, and they have the Phillips catalog, which means they have Markevich and they have Heitink. Well, okay, they're spoiled for riches, no question about it. But Markevich is out of print too. And isn't there somebody at this label who says, wow, we're one of the major labels in the history of the universe. We have all of these fabulous performances. And shouldn't we have readily available at all times two Tchaikovsky cycles? I mean, Shouldn't they? Just asking. Anyway, keep on listening, friends. This is ripe for reissue, but don't hold your breath. I, I... Take care.